guys, how's it going? In this week's little technique video, we're going to be talking about the French curve. Uh, this was actually a very often requested video, which trips me out because I think it's a pretty simple and easy tool to use, but I realize that a lot of people don't really use it. They're only used to like using like a regular ruler. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about this guy, how to use it within your sewing space, examples of when it's a good time to use it. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So the first example I've got for you guys is the um, is on the full bus adjustment. If you happen to have like a lot of weird things that happen in the arm side, so like these jagged edges that kind of can happen um, if you've had to do especially a large bus adjustment. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my French curve, and I'm just gonna go ahead and use you know one of the curves to blend that space. So actually I'm gonna flip this around. So you can kind of see there that I went ahead and merged this entire area into one seamless curve. Now that portion of the curve will now be a lot more smooth and then you can go ahead and use your clear ruler to redraw in the seam allowance if you draw them in. I like to draw them in in my pattern so I'm just going to go ahead and do that so you guys can kind of see how I'm rolling with that. And at that point the seam allowance curve you don't necessarily have to use a French curve for but you can if you want. Either way this will be your new cutting line rather than the original jagged edge after you've done your adjustment. So that's the first example. The second example of when it's a good time to use your French curve is if you have two pattern pieces that are not lining up in the side seam. Now let's say you've adjusted your uh, your front pattern piece and now you need to get it to match on the back. Um, things don't match up right so I'm gonna go ahead and walk the seam like I would if this were any other design I'm walking the seams matching up my my notches and then I see that oh the back piece is too short to the front right I've done so many adjustments to the front piece that's now not matching up to the back piece so what I'm gonna do is use my French curve and uh, line it up along the front pattern piece and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to redraw that bottom curve along the bottom of that bodice, right? Because you want to make sure that when you're sewing the two pieces together, it's a smooth, even curve along the bottom bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and match it up along the front and I'm going to trace that out. And so at this point, I know that the front is fine. And so I'm just going to clamp down on the ruler and the back sheet, move this guy out of the way. I'm going to redraw that curve because that's going to be where it matches up to the front. At that point I can take my ruler, extend my seam allowances out, and then I also know that my seam allowance is going to go up here. And if I'm drawing out that seam allowance all the way out to where it goes, you can see that I've moved down that seam allowance and I've added that space. So now when I walk my pattern pieces again over here, you'll now have a brand new smooth transition between the adjusted front piece and the back piece. So now this is going to be your new cut line right in here. So you've essentially added that, that 5 8 in this example. Cool. So that is second place that you'll be using your French curve. The third one is going to be a little bit more tricky. Um, this one, this is in case you have done any adjustments like regarding any darts. Now in the side seam, if you were to do an adjustment on the side seam, you would actually use your straight ruler just so that you have a straight side seam. But on the bottom, because you're dealing with, you know, usually a bigger dart, uh, the curve will be better. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, fold my dart. All right, so I'm just doing this so you guys can see where that dart is. If this is my center front, if I'm dealing with a piece of fabric, you have to think about how you would normally fold the dart. You would normally fold the dart towards the center front, you know, when you're finishing your piece, right? Now, if you're looking at this line here, that's a very weird jagged edge, right? Like you don't want a jagged edge you want a smooth curve, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, take my French curve, I'm gonna go ahead and butt it up there. 
you can kind of see that there's that jagged edge still so I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in now if you have like a tracing wheel I don't know where mine is right now but you would you could take your tracing wheel and draw that line in there so you know that when you extend it you can see where that new dart is going to be but since I don't know where mine is I'm going to go ahead and just push this here I'm going to go ahead and open up this dart Oop. well that's that up but you can kind of see where that curve is going right so you know that this dart is going to go this way and this way so I'm going to go ahead and just finish off that line I'm going to finish it off over here as well and if all goes well, if I cut along the bottom of this dart as if this were an edge of fabric that I'm literally going to close the dart on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold it. And if all goes well, that bottom line should line up in a beautiful curve. And you can see that, but there it is. There's that nice curve and at that point, when I'm cutting it, everything will be lining up perfectly on that edge. Now, the last thing that you just need to take into account is, with your French curve uh, is that you will be using it a lot. So I find this as valuable as the regular gridded ruler, right? Um, if you are pattern drafting or you're making your own sloper, you will be using this curve quite a lot in order to draft like the shoulder. Now. Um, different parts of the ruler will correspond to different parts of the arm side. Um, unfortunately, I don't have them drafted up here, but um, you know, if you're using a slope or instructions, they'll usually tell you about kind of how much of a curve you need to be including. Um, this one that I have here, I bought for school a while back. I think you can get it on Amazon. I should be able to put in a little description uh, link for this guy. Um, it's okay, spend the money, it's worth it because you can use this one, but ultimately the body is not a series of just really jagged straight lines. You're gonna need this one in order to be able to really pattern draft. So uh, thanks again so much for watching this video. Hope you found it useful. Uh, if you liked it, thumbs up, subscribe, all the places, all the stuff. Check out the Patreon if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.